So, I've been fangirling over Lamborghini Aventadors lately, or fanboying, it's 2022. Take this Aventador SV, for example, all right? You'll notice this Aventador SV sounds very similar to a 90s legend. <laughs> Not sure yet? Well, the answer is the McLaren F1. All right, now let's play it side by side. Isn't that insane? The Lamborghini Aventador 6.5 liter V12. I don't know if it's the design of the headers or some other aspect of the exhaust system, or maybe it's the, the firing order. The Lamborghini Aventador sounds just like a McLaren F1, not the other way around. It's not the F1 sounds like the Aventador. Don't say that, it's gonna people off. Isn't that so cool? So if you want a car that has well, actually more horsepower than a McLaren F1 and sounds just like a McLaren F1 and has a better gearbox and, uh, well, doesn't cost over $10 million, you got the Aventador. And if you're in the market for an Aventador, first of all, congratulations, you must be doing something right. But if you are in the market for an Aventador, you've got, well, four or five choices, all right? Let's start with the LP700-4 the 2011-2012 first Aventadors. 700 horsepower, all-wheel drive, single clutch gearbox, uh, very popular in orange. Then in about 2017, you've got the LP750-4, otherwise known as the Lamborghini Aventador SV. Personally, my favorite version. Uh, it's got a little bit more power. It's got a really nice exterior, very similar to the exterior of the Murcielago SV. Uh, with the carbon wing, new front and rear bumpers, side skirts. On the inside, there's a couple interior changes. The most notable one being that in the most aggressive setting, your tachometer is like that of a, uh, a race cars. But if you are looking for ultimate performance potential, uh, I really have to recommend the Aventador S and the SVJ. Uh, but just bearing in mind, if you don't have the skills to really take it it's, it's the result of slight differences in the car's engineering that are quite precise and quite cool. Um, if you don't have the skills to take advantage of that, this really doesn't apply to you. But the Aventador S and the SVJ, and the Ultimate actually, they all have rear wheel steering. Now the Aventador S is, you know, the LP740-4, you know, so let's go with 10 horsepower less than the SV. That might not be always true. Every car is probably a little different. That car has almost as much power as an SV. It's got rear wheel steering. I imagine the shifting of the single clutch gearbox is um, improved. And then you've got the SVJ, which is lighter. That's the LP770. So even more power than the SV. It's lighter, better aerodynamics, got the rear wheel steering. It is so much better, even with those imperceptible differences that it is faster than the SV on the Nürburgring by 15 seconds, which is interesting because in a video recently done by CarWow, where they did drag races between all four different versions, it was actually quite close, except for this 700-4. If you wanna, you know, win in a drag race, the original Aventador isn't gonna get you there. It's a lot slower than all the others for whatever reason, but Interestingly, the Aventador S, the SV, and the SVJ were all very close. The SV and the SVJ being almost neck and neck sometimes, if I remember correctly, which is fascinating. So, if you care only about straight line speed, buying an SVJ is kind of a waste of money. But if you care about road course performance and things like that and think you can take advantage of the improvements, the SVJ is for you. Um, still single clutch. It's really interesting. 
because the SVJ, while it is based on the Dinosaur Aventador, it did hold the Nürburgring production car record for a little while. They actually knocked Porsche off of the podium, off of the pedestal. They beat Porsche at the Nürburgring. Not many manufacturers get to do that. But then Porsche did take it back with their 911 GT2. And the 911 GT2 is freakishly fast. Those cars are nuts, man. I'm a BMW guy, but you can't deny the GT2 is a hell of a car. So that's all very interesting. Um, the SVJ, uh, while it goes for like almost a million dollars now for whatever reason, uh, one of the most notable things about the SVJ as well is that the exhaust system is reminiscent of the design they introduced on the Huracan Performante and then la later carried over to the Huracan Evo and the STO, the kind of the center exit design. The SVJ does not sound like ordinary Aventadors, all right? It has a completely different exhaust note. Um, so if you're looking for a car that sounds like an SV, you're not really going to get that from an SVJ. But, so you win and you lose some. 